der ist der Erfüllung Alte. Ne? Das ist die Atapapo Alte. This lives there, only there. This And, uh, unfortunately, they didn't have this fish here. But they had the other fishes which live at the same place. This is Hemigramus blairi, and they have to be in large groups. The group in here is uh, almost 200, and you see they form one school. And there are some cardinal tetras, paracyrodoxyrodal, and there are heros, which they live at the same place, but there are no Okay, but uh, isn't it uh, predatory because there are a lot of, uh, is it, uh, it's a very large fish, won't it eat the smaller fishes? Nope. No small fishes? They probably, uh, they would take if one of the fishes gets sick. Sick. Yes. Or if you, if you keep an aquarium like this for several months and you never feed your fish, so they're going to try to survive, no? This is the point. That in these areas where these fishes in this Atapapo River, as you can see on some of the photos here, uh, there are no submerged plants. The only place you can find some submerged plants is along the edges. And uh, if you do an aquarium according to this with the right fishes and the right combination and the right biotope, you have it forever. You can have this aquarium for the next five years without doing anything. The only thing you have to do is add the water that evaporates. And, it's and only you have to feed the fish. Okay, no it's water changes, nothing else. No such. water change. No it's need. It's very easy to maintain it. Very easy, aquarium. yeah. You don't have to trim it every day or every three like you have to do with an aquascape tank. But how about this, this yellow water come from? From the leaves? Yes, the from the leaves, leaves? yes. Okay. You will see an aquarium over there, biotope from the Rio Negro region is even more dark okay, because there are more leaves in there. Okay. Yes. So this one, if you can briefly explain about this biotope. Well, this is a biotope from uh, southern Florida. No, the US, USA fishes. All, uh, they live there. And what are the fishes like that you have used this? Well, I mean, most of the people don't know these fishes because they have not been exported. No one has these fishes. I think I've seen something like this in India. No. No? No, no. You're mixing up probably with hemichromis. Hemichromis is a, a South American And what's the plants that you've used here? This is? This is uh, Valisneria and Eliocharis. Okay. Valisneria and Eliocharis. That's about all you can find there. This is in Southern Florida. of Rio Negro. And you see it becomes so dark as in nature because of the leaves. This is the same why you have the black water, because wherever the black water flows, uh, there are millions and billions and trillions of leaves. And even if you go under the sand, you dig into the sand, you can see this all in my book. In my book I show it, when you dig into the sand, you always come into layers of leaves. And they have also Hemigramus blairi, they live also there. They live in the Atapapo, they live only in black water. These fishes live only in so-called black water. And the so-called black water is always tea color, no? Okay. And a lot of driftwood, no? Hmm. This is from very small creeks in the Rio Negro basin of the Amazon. Okay. So, so if you can briefly... Ex so no, if you put in this, because here would be disaster. Oh, that's a they don't live in such... <laughs> Yeah. So if you can explain about this. This is a, a biotope from Lake Tanganyika in Africa. Okay. And this is very important because uh, Tanganyika has trophies. Yes. There are over 100 different populations of trophies species. Uh, there's about three or four populations in here. But what is most important with this cichlid, most people never realize it, that trophies must be kept also in groups. If I had only two or three in this aquarium, they would fight all the time. Okay. But it's a group, and living in a group, they never fight. Okay, so, but uh, but um, I've heard, like, you know, only the Victorian or Malawi cichlids are very aggressive or territorial as compared to, you know, Tangiakan uh, cichlids. Is it so, or? Uh, it's always a problem with people. Okay. Everyone knows everything, but no one informs himself and hardly anyone reads. 
So this is why there is so much wrong information. You cannot get me into internet because I would say at least 80 to 90% information on internet is wrong. And all those people put in the texts in there is simply persons who just do not want to read and do not want to inform themselves or have not been traveled. But this is ridiculous. Yes, there are cichlids actually in Lake Tanganyika, endemic cichlids, and there are cichlids also endemic in Malawi, which are predators. And those predators can be aggressive. But most of the fishes, I mean, Tanganyika has about 300 species. They're very peaceful. There's no problem. But there are few open water, bigger cichlids, and those are predators. But they're not living like here on, along the shore. So it's wrong information. This okay. is all I can say. I was the head judge. Yes, you're the head judge. I informed them all about the judges from different parts of the world. And, and if you can explain briefly about this uh, biotope. This is a biotope from uh, China. This is a, uh, this, I think this common name is always uh, almost all over the world called white cloud. Stanictis, oh, this is, Stanictis uh, albonus. This is, isn't this mountain minnows? Similar to uh, I don't know what you call mountain minnows. I know the English you, normal name of this is white cloud. Okay. So I don't know what you call mountain yeah. And this is very for? typical. Huh? What are those holes for? Oh, yeah. 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 No, no. They just create. You want to let me talk or not? Yes. Sure. Okay. They just created a natural biotope the way they saw it in nature. Mm. So, uh, um, oh, how different this is because we are not seeing any moving water. You know, the water is built quite stagnant and it's got a little picky or muddy on top of it. That's how it is in nature. Yes. This is a very natural habitat. This is like a swamp area. Yes, in, swamp is the uh, right word. In uh, in southern Malaysia peninsula, in the uh, Johor area. And it's really black like this, extremely acid. And this is a biotope of betas. Okay. But naturally now the betas are hidden away. So, okay, but you have betas. I was just about, uh, so there's only betas uh, here, but we cannot see them yeah, anymore exactly. right now. Yeah. And you know, they live in stagnant water, no? Yes. And this is a biotope from uh, lake areas in Ayamaru on the Fogelkop Peninsula of uh, Indonesia. It is, belongs to the island of uh, New Guinea and the most, the most western part of New Guinea forms like a head of a bird and in the middle of this is a lake area of three lakes and in these three lakes this fish is endemic and I discovered them in 1982 yeah, they this had is never been known before yeah, these are both money rainbows. Only were described. And it's the prism money rainbow. Yes. And they only live there, Balisneria, Ceratophyllum de Mersum, floating plants, and, uh, and not much else. Okay. Thank you, sir, for your time. It was nice speaking to you.